So if we look at the before and after, ooh, look at that dust. It's like it somehow knows the dust that you wanna pull up and it's just digging it out. Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com. It is still cloudy outside, so it's time for an image processing tutorial. In this video, I wanna show you some really easy ways to make the stars smaller in your astro photos. Reducing star size has a lot of benefits when it comes to processing astrophotography images. It has a way of making the nebulae or galaxy details of your image really stand out when you can pull those stars back. Sometimes they kind of overtake the image. So without further ado, let's hop into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you some easy ways to make stars smaller. Okay, we're in Adobe Photoshop now and I've got three images pulled up that I think could benefit from a star reduction and they're at various states of processing just to give you an example of when and why you would do this. Here's the three images here. We've got the Iris Nebula, the Flying Bat Nebula, part of the Eastern Veil, and the Sol Nebula here. The only linear one is the Flying Bat. Let's go back to the Sol Nebula because as I was processing this image, I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I'd really like to bring those stars down a little bit and pull the nebula up. I think we could create more, draw more attention to the nebula structure if those stars were smaller. So here's one way to reduce stars in Photoshop that works pretty good. So we're gonna go into the select in the menu here and color range. Now I use this tool very often. Uh, you can use it for a lot of things in Photoshop, but uh, star reduction is one of them. So I'm, I'm gonna go to select color range and highlights. There's a few different options from the dropdown here, sampled colors, mid-tone shadows. We want highlights. Essentially, we're hoping that it's just going to select the brightest areas of the image, which is mostly the stars. Bit of a rudimentary preview there. We're gonna go with these settings and see how that does. So when I zoom in here, good. We've, we've selected the stars uh, mostly and, and a few things that we don't actually wanna select as well. That's the point of this stage is to actually select the stars. With those selected, we can go into modify, select, modify, and expand. And the reason for this is we wanna make sure we capture the whole star. Stars kind of are bright in the middle and then they extend outward with their, their fuzziness if you will. So we want to make sure we capture all of that or some weird things will start happening. So why don't I expand by two? Perfect. So we you know, we've definitely captured all of the star and now we're going to feather that mask to soften it up between the edges of our selection. So again, select, modify, feather, and I'm just going to feather it by two. These marching ants don't really give us a good representation of our selection. That's why I like to use the Select and Mask tool in Photoshop, one of my favorite tools by far. So that's under the Select menu, Select and Mask. And now we can really see our selection. And it looks like we've done a good job. It looks like we've got most of the stars there, a nice soft edge around them. This is what you wanna see in a star mask. There's different view modes here. Now you, yours might be starting with either onion skin or overlay. Uh, I have found the black and white to be my favorite, so I just leave it on this. Uh, I recommend that one for star masks and pretty well any other mask. It's the most useful, I think. So you might be noticing that we've got some areas of the nebulosity here selected too. We don't want to select those, of course, so we can use the brush tool to remove from our selection. I've got it set to a size of 62 here, a nice soft edge, not hard at all. And then I would just hold down the Alt key and remove from the selection. Now, of course, I am removing some of those star selections as well. It's not perfect, but uh, you can really uh, get in there and refine things if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK with our selection here. And here's where we actually start reducing the size of the stars. With our stars selected, we will go to Filter, Other, Minimum. This is the tool for star reduction in Photoshop. I absolutely love. It's useful for other things, but especially stars. So we'll click that and then it's gonna give us a preview here and you wanna make sure that the preserve setting is set to roundness for obvious reasons. Now the default setting, it looks like it's pretty well just removing the stars completely. If you click and move, you can see the before after. So why don't we just bring that back just a little bit and in, in my case, I'm gonna use a value of, let's say 0.5, just a little more subtle. 
and then I'll hit OK. And now we can see our image with those reduced stars. So hopefully you see quite a big difference there. We can of course go ahead and process this image further, but uh, I definitely see more of that nebula structure and my eyes can focus on that more now that those stars are smaller. If we really want to review the before and after, I'll just copy what we just did and go back before that action and paste it on top. There you go. So pretty dramatic difference. Now, of course, our stars and our nebula are on the same layer. We don't have full control of the image like you would if you use something like StarNet and created an actual star layer. Uh, but that's this is a useful little tweak to your image. Maybe you'll use it near the end of your process to add some dramatic punch to the image. But either way, it's a useful tool to use uh, when you use it, of course, is up to you. Let's move on to the next image. This time we're looking at an image that is in its linear state, believe it or not. This was shot through the Optolong L Extreme filter, which just does a crazy job of separating a deep sky object, especially one like this, a supernova remnant from a washed out city sky. So we can already see the nebula pretty well in the linear, linear unstretched image, which is not often the case. But the reason I wanted to show you this one as an example is because this nebula is so bright. Those bright areas are almost as bright as those stars and it can be really hard to make that star selection. So in these situations, I have a little trick I like to use. So we'll just go ahead and copy this layer and make a new one. But on this new layer, we're going to bring those midtones down and hopefully those nebula details, but leave those bright stars shining through. You probably see where I'm going with that. So if we do somewhat of a curve like that, you can see what starts to look kind of like a star mask. We'll actually bring the highlights up. Uh, kind of an ugly looking thing, but you can see that we're actually uh, separating the stars. So we can grab them on this layer and then go back to our original layer and, and apply those changes. So with this layer, might have overdid it a little bit. Let's see how, how good we did. So again, select color range, highlights, and it looks like we're doing pretty good. We've selected the stars. And again, we'll go to modify expand by two and feather by two as well. Now let's take a look at our mask with the select, select and mask. Again, looking really good, but we've selected more of those nebula details uh, than we wanted to, but it would be even worse if we didn't create this new layer where we tone down the midtones. So we can go ahead and either remove them in here like so using the holding down the alt key in the brush. If I press OK, I'll show you another way to remove it. If we get in here and we use the lasso tool and again, hold down alt, you can just draw around the areas that you don't want to select. If it's easier at this stage to turn off this layer uh, to really see the nebula regions that we don't want to manipulate just going through and removing these areas. So uh, you might be saying to yourself, this is a bit of a pain in that, uh, you know, if there was something that can automatically do this, well, there is StarNet automatically does this, but guess what? It also has a hard time with these areas that it can't tell if it's a bright star or a bright chunk of the nebula. So those are similar issues and it, it's, it's just part of the process for uh, selecting stars in an image with bright areas. So it's not really a big deal going in here and removing those areas. And we've got a pretty decent star mask. And uh, in this case, I'll just leave those areas. So on our original layer, we, can, we don't need this one anymore. We only needed it to create that mask. Now at this stage, if you wanna keep using this mask later on and having it because it's been so well defined, we spent all this time creating this mask, you can actually do yourself a favor and keep it as a layer to use later down the road in your processing. So I'm gonna do a visual merge. The keyboard shortcut on a PC is Shift, Control, Alt, N plus E. Now I have a new layer here. And on this layer, I'm going to click the button down here that's called Add Layer Mask. So now, if I wanna use this mask later on down the road, I just have to keep this layer and you would just click Control on the mask and you have that selection again, you can go right back to it. Super, super handy. So with our mask selected, I'm gonna turn this layer off. I'm going to do the filter minimum. Filter other minimum. And this time we'll do, let's see if we can see what it's doing to the big stars. 
just holding down the space bar to cruise around the image here. And let's see, point, we'll do 0 0.5. So, yeah, we can do a little more aggressive. Why don't we do uh, 1.0? And again, I just wanted to show you what it's like to reduce stars at the beginning stages of the image. This is linear, so now, before we've done anything, those stars are starting out a lot smaller. So, like I said, the time that you choose to actually start reducing star size is up to you. Doing it right off the bat, I wouldn't suggest. Usually it's after you kind of bring the details up that you want to take those stars out or reduce them. But again, that's open to interpretation there. So let's move on to the third and final image, the Iris Nebula. This one is by far the most processed out of the three images we've looked at. And it's a pretty cool image. I just love reflection nebulae like this. And uh, so it looks really good, but um, some people might consider this a, a finished image. But in my eyes, uh, I would love to bring those stars down a little bit, shrink them so you can see more of that dust. So for this one, we're actually gonna use a Photoshop action and it's an action set that I really love called the Astronomy Tools Action Set. I'll leave a link in the description for that. So there's a few tools for star reduction in that set. One is literally called Make Stars Smaller. So I'll run that once to show you what that looks like. Let me just create a new layer. Make Stars Smaller. It's a quicker action. So you can run it several times over. That was a pretty subtle change. So why don't we press play again? And it's pretty amazing to do that in one click considering what we just went through to make those uh, star reduction masks ourselves. So if I do the before and after, I'm seeing a noticeable improvement. That, see how that dust comes out? Another action to try out is the uh, enhanced DSO and reduce stars. By far my favorite action out of this entire set. We'll run this one, it takes a little bit longer so this one is not only reducing the stars, but bringing up those mid-tones and faint dim areas. Again, we'll run it twice. And this one is almost like magic. So if we look at the before and after, whoo, look at that dust. It's like it somehow knows the dust that you wanna pull up and it's just digging it out. So, you know, leaving it as is probably isn't wise here. Maybe you wanna put that as a layer at, uh, you know, 50% or, 55% for that matter, or make some subtle adjustments there. But man, that tool is great for reducing stars. So you have a number of options for making your stars smaller in your images in Photoshop. And now lastly, but not least, this is a bonus. This is not done in Photoshop, but it's a tool that complements Photoshop and it's called Starnet++. Now this tool will actually remove all the stars from your image, which can be handy because it can help with creating star masks, or just being able to uh, independently control some of the nebula details or galaxy without the stars. So that's a standalone tool and I'll leave a link in the description for Starnet++, but essentially it's just gonna be installed in this folder on your computer and you wanna make sure that you save your image as a 16-bit TIFF file. That's what it needs to actually do the process properly. So on this image of the iris here, you would just double check image mode, 16-bit and then make sure that it's saved as a TIFF. After that, make sure that the file is placed into the same folder that Starnet is in. I can see it here, Iris, I've put it in. And then you just drag and drop the file onto RGB Starnet. And then it's gonna do its thing. This can take a while, especially if it's a big image. You can kind of get an idea off the bat here of how fast it's gonna go. Okay, Starnet is finished now and it is pretty incredible. So I will just put the starless image it created on top as a new layer on our Iris Nebula picture. Pretty dramatic, crazy looking image. And uh, man, you can really focus on the dust and what's going on in the night sky there. So uh, it's just too tempting not to, to push this a little further right now. Look at that dust. It's amazing how much more you can see when you do that. So a lot of people will just finish their image as a starless image. Sometimes it's really cool looking. Uh, but as for adding the stars back, when you do it through this tool in Photoshop, all you would do to add the stars back is using that selection you made earlier, copy the stars and paste them on top as a new layer if you wanted to combine the image. In Pixinsight, of course, there's an option for creating a star mask all in one shot. But 
that's another animal. I hope this video was useful for you and you discovered a few new tricks for your astrophotography images. If you like this kind of thing, please give the video a thumbs up and of course subscribe to this channel. I really appreciate all the support and until next time, clear skies. Thank you.